mTOR activation is activated, you need IGF-1 and insulin to activate mTOR. You know, they work synergistically. So depending on what the signaling ampl amplitude is of the food, so leucine will signal to those specific hormones like IG, IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor. Remember, insulin and IGF-1 were one and the same a very long time ago in early life. They weren't separate. So where insulin goes, so does IGF-1. And if you're in a catabolic state, you know, mTOR, IGF-1 and insulin are going to be down there. So it's a matter of what is the signaling level. If the signaling is too high, it's associated with poor outcomes. But just because these signals are too high, it doesn't mean that basically, um, you know, it's caused by meat. It's caused by the Randall cycle, combining a lot of fat and a lot of sugar together, animal, you know, pretty much a sad diet, and amplifying mTOR, amplifying insulin and amplifying IGF-1 signaling. Well, that's the problem. And you're not actually growing muscle with that amplification. What you're growing is adipose tissue. You know, too much energy in the bloodstream. Get, get it out of this um, place. It's glycating and oxidizing the living daylights of, um, of this bloodstream. We need to get it out here. So those signaling molecules, those anabolic molecules are basically saying, let's take all this stuff and put it away. So they're not only involved in anabolism, like building tissue, bones, ligaments, and stuff like that. They're also involved. So if you keep mTOR very low in a catabolic state, what you'll do is you'll break down your collagen structures. It's absolute nonsense. If you want to become sarcopenic, osteoporotic, and very unhealthy, and become very frail and vulnerable to death from frailty, you may have low mTOR, but I'll tell you one thing, you won't live very long. And we know that C. elegans can actually, you can put them in a very frail state, and they'll go into sort of, they're not like humans, we can't go into hibernation sort of state. They can extend their life but we can't. We just become very frail and then we are very vulnerable to the vagaries of life and can die. Where C. elegans can actually um, go into a sort of a low functioning state, like a sort of a semi, um, you know, co well, not a, um, yeah, where they basically just lower their, their metabolic rate. They actually go into this sort of, um, a bit like, you know, like certain animals, like bears that hibernate in a sort of a, it's not exactly a hibernation. It's just sort of just shutting down a lot of systems inside the, and really going like running on very cool, very low, you know, and they can survive a bit longer until nutrients are available to, to basically, to basically grow and function again. But that's not what we humans do. We are more complex organisms. And if we do something like that, our muscle skeletal structure starts falling apart because we need mTOR activation and we need also some level of deuterium that plays an important role as a growth factor. Um, and these sort of signaling hormones and stuff like that do have an effect on deuterium where it actually goes to be used for collagen structures. So all this actually works synergistically together. And Dave, unfortunately, doesn't understand this. He's a reductionist, like many others, who just sees things in a very reductionist, narrow way and can't think holistically how complex interactions of a lot of different biochemical pathways work together synergistically. You know, you can't get over-exaggeration of mTOR or insulin or um, uh, insulin-like growth factor. And I'll tell you why. Glucagon, simple. I, that's all I have to say, glucagon. Some people have understood that. Most people won't. Let me explain. 
when you're in a low carbohydrate state, you're eating only muscle meats and stuff like that, your insulin to glucagon is 1.3. That means you're producing slightly more insulin, but your glucagon is also high relatively to any other diet because you need it for gluconeogenesis because there's no glucose coming in. And glucose is suppressing insulin. Remember, I said in ancient organisms, insulin and IGF-1 were one thing. They've just become separate. You could say division of labor in order to, because they are involved in certain other unique signaling pathways. But generally speaking, they do go in lockstep. So when you have to have muscle protein synthesis, you don't only need insulin, you also need IGF-1. You need both to work together. They work together because they're so tied together he's ancestrally f for billions of years since early life. IGF-1 and insulin are were one and the same. So since glucagon is elevated, insulin or IGF-1 cannot overexpress on a meat-only diet. Throw in sugar, changes the whole complexion. You amplify, in use because the sugar comes in, what, what, what does it do? It suppresses glucagon. You don't need um, gluconeogenesis to produce glucose. So you suppress glucagon. What do you do to IGF-1 and insulin? You amplify them, and they drag with them mTOR. So what? it's a sad diet that is actually creating over-amplification of IGF-1 and mTOR. So it's complete and utter nonsense. The guy does not understand the Randall cycle, and because he doesn't understand the Randall cycle, he sees this in a reductionist way and comes up with reductionist conclusions. So it's just nonsense. Um, Bruce Lee, it's nonsense. So he's another crackpot in terms of his understanding of these things, you know. So I always say, show me the research where the animal or the human is only eating meat, nothing else. There's no carbs in there, no rice, no potatoes, no other thing, just meat. Show me the over-amplification of mTOR. There's not one study they can show you. They look at you and they know they've got nothing because all the research is from mixed diets. So they know they're making up shit and they're using that reductionist research to make a claim against meat and using the proxy mTOR as the issue. And you go, really? Really, guys? Is that all you got? Please go back to um, to school and learn something. You know, it's just friggin' absolute nonsense. But that's the sort of stuff, you know, well, I have to put up with <laughs> every every day. Well, not every day, but, you know, <laughs> there are always people out there coming up with all sorts of things. Um, yeah, anyway. anyway.